Hi everyone, so I'm Julia, and for my project for ID slash LY308, Indigenous Forms of Justice, I am going to be talking about Indigenous people's connection to Earth, the land, the sky world, and animals, and all the living things it has to offer. But first, I would like to do a territorial acknowledgement, one that the school hasn't stated, which is included in our syllabus, is that I, along with the school, acknowledge that um, we are on the traditional territories of the Neutral, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee people. And as far as where I live, which is in Hamilton, which is just about a half an hour outside of Brantford, um, the city of Hamilton acknowledges that we are on the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron, Wandot, Haudenosaunee, and Mississauga's traditional territories. And I also hope that I pronounce it all correctly. And let's get started. Um, for my project, I definitely f played around with the idea of what I was going to do. I honestly don't think of myself as a particularly creative person, at least when it comes to like creative arts and stuff like that. I did take art in high school, but definitely was not one of my strongest classes. But um, I did end up coming down to doing a visual art. Um, it was something that I ultimately decided on. I figured that I could at least try to explore my creativity more and maybe bring out that side of me and find it within myself. And I think I did that. And I'm excited to show you guys what I have come up with. And let's get into talking about the assignment. So. Basically, as we know from this class and from what our professor Lisa Van Every, Dr. Lisa Van Every has ta taught us, um, Indigenous people, many of the things and the issues that have either have been brought to them and things that have been taken away from them and just things that they deal with on an everyday basis always come back to land. Land is their life. It is something that they revolve their lives around. It is something that is so heavily influenced in their everyday, day-to-day -day life. And as it is for everyone, but for them, it has is so much of a deeper meaning. And just not even the land, but also like the sky world and what it means like beyond what we do know and what we can see. Um, and then so many animals, all animals, as like, you know, as a matter of fact, mean so much to indigenous people and how they take care of them and how they take care of us and how the land takes care of us and how we or indigenous people also are supposed to take care of the land in return and indigenous law to start off since this is a justice based class also and does talk about indigenous law indigenous law is centered around responsibility and so there is this responsibility that indigenous people are given the land and us even us being non, those of us who are non-Indigenous, we're given this land, we should be taking care of it. And the Indigenous people are the ones who really take that so seriously and have in so many ways kept that alive and kept that going for themselves and within their communities and have tried to show that to the rest of us who are not Indigenous. And whether some of us have taken that seriously or not, there are many as we know, there have been many instances where it is those non-Indigenous and pretty much every issue, as a matter of fact, that us who are non-Indigenous have taken away so much land from Indigenous people, as we know about the Six Nations Reserve. We know that that is all they have left. And the original size of the reserve, they only have a small, small portion of it now. And much of it has been taken away from them from us and it has been taken away and has been converted and turned where and on it they build residential schools and while on the part of the reserve where some people do still live and they do still have their communities but much of this land has become converted which where places like Hamilton have been built, Laurier Brantford has been built and everything like that and so there is this responsibility to take care of the land but there is this now disconnect and there is, and I say that to say there, while nothing can come, at least from what I have learned and what I um, think, 
that nothing can come between the connection that indigenous people have to the land and to earth and to the sky world and to water and to animals and to living things because it is something that they have that is so deep rooted within their culture and with everything that they believe in and everything they practice but when you do take away the most essential part that is land and something that they have to continuously fight for, something they have not stopped fighting for, something that they have just asked for back. Because back a long, long time ago, as we all know and we have all learned, when Europeans came and brought and brought themselves here and they had, you know, made agreements, made treaties, but then didn't live up to them by then just trying to assimilate and then just taking away the land. You know, it is something that is terrible and completely, completely wrong and something that they do not deserve. They came, they claimed the land, they agreed to share, make trees, make agreements, everything that went into it back in, during that time. And they were completely and still are taken advantage of, walked all over and... They have been traumatized as we learned about intergenerational trauma. This is things and problems and issues that have gone on for years and decades and centuries and just so much time has passed. And while change, you know, little bits and pieces and tiny things have been done, the biggest issue and the biggest things that they have asked for be done have not been resolved. And, you know, while we even know in being in the current state of the um, governing party that we have, which is um, the liberals, Mr. Justin Trudeau, you know, he has come forward and he has said things that need to change. And I know that we've talked about this in our class and um, of things that he said and that he's apologized, but then if it was really received as an apology, because at the same time, things haven't really changed and there hasn't been progress that has at least been shown to the indigenous community, which is completely, in my opinion, just terrible because one, you should say things that you mean and you should work towards what you mean. And if you want to actually make meaningful change, you should take the steps to do so. And I think there are so many people in the indigenous community who are not only have been frustrated and are frustrated and are upset and exhausted and tired of dealing with everything, they continue to fight because they know that it's right and they know it's what they deserve. And it is the utmost, the, the least that we could do is give them back what they deserve and what they are entitled to. And so I think it was important to talk about this land or to talk about the land and the earth and the connection that indigenous people have to it because I saw throughout this course that it was just a reoccurring thing that we came back to, how everything centers around land and just all the issues and things that we've been seeing out in Nova Scotia and the stuff that happened back in 2006 in Caledonia and how now it's come back up again now in 2020. And I just think that it has created this kind of disconnect between um, Indigenous people's connection because we've taken away something that is so essential to them and something that is just so much so a part of their lives and something that they surround and revolve their lives around we've taken it away and they have to continue to fight to just have the life that they came here to have and that they've intentionally worked towards and practiced and tried to keep alive amongst while so many other things outside of land issues has happened and so i guess with that all being said i hope that all made sense with that being said um i'm going to show you my art piece so I have this little canvas here in which I painted on and I did make a small error as I tried to be creative with how I painted so don't mind that but basically this is my painting here and so as you can see this is an eagle here which is indeed the part that I messed up on and for that I apologize. I did my best to try to fix it but as we all know, once paint is on a canvas, it is not exactly easy to fix. So this is my painting. And as you can see, I have a sunset here in the back. This tree I painted in what I interpreted to be my best attempt at drawing the tree of peace, which was a big surrounding um, topic that we talked about in the class and through various pictures that Professor Lisa Van Every showed us during our time in the course. and. 
As we know, the Tree of Peace is a white pine, and it is very much a big piece of the connection that Indigenous people have to the natural world, to land, to earth, to living things. Um, even one thing, um, tree branches and lungs are something that are compared to as very similar. And even tree stumps are compared to being similar to fingerprints in which they are said to be that they're both living and that trees can communicate with each other. And so in this tree of peace, just like whoever resembling that we learned in class, um, that whoever comes under it and needs the protection and needs peace, that this tree is there to protect them and everything like that. And so, um, so basically one other thing that I want to note about this painting, as you can see, this part is done in color and down here, it gets a little darker. I have glued on some of these little like bead rock looking things down at the bottom and as you can see we kind of transition and I did the best job that I could from black and white into color and so I kind of want to explain the reasoning for that so basically as we know the something else that the indigenous people are very in tune with and very connected to is the sky world in the essence of where people go and loved ones go and relatives go when they pass away they go to the sky world and something as symbolic as the eagle who is the protector who has a lot of responsibility who is known as the strongest bird who can see the farthest has the longest wingspan who can fly the highest and all sorts of things like that and an eagle being part of the sky world and how much significance not only the eagle but an eagle feather has um it is also a very big part of how they're connected to the sky world. And so I did this portion in color, not only because it is a sunset, but because I feel like the connection to the sky world hasn't so much so been interrupted at a face value as land has become, as we see with land, all these riots and the things like I mentioned in Nova Scotia and Caledonia. And not that that taints or takes away from the connection, but in fighting for it, I guess, in a way would strengthen the connection, but it also makes it more difficult when it's something that has been taken away and you've had to fight for on and on and for years and years. And so I am actually happy with how this portion, besides the my attempt at drawing or painting an eagle came out, but then I proceeded to do part of this water here and I put little like white stripes to enhance like the waves and stuff like that. This here, this part here, it starts to transition from the blue water into the black and then to the darker ground. And then as we can see like neutral colored rocks, the stump and everything like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I made that part turn to black because into black and white and a little bit of gray. It's kind of, to see the distinction, it's a little hard. You can kind of see like the different colors there, the different shades. And I did that because I feel as though, as I've said, with everything going on with the land and it being disrupted um, and how, you know, original treaties have not been respected for centuries and years, um, just stuff like that. This, their connection is still there, but in some way, to some degree, it has been disrupted by those who are not indigenous taking away what they are entitled to and what they initially came. And as we know, um, Canada, as far as we know it, would not be what it is without indigenous people coming here, discovering it, claiming it, and starting li life here. And so this turns into black because we in black and white and gray, because we have seen that disruption and we continue to see that unfortunate dis disruption and quite honestly for this project I had had a different idea and then the more I thought about it and the more I thought about the reoccurring themes and stuff like that it made me realize that this was so much more so something that I um I thought about a lot more and I think is really important and I think seeing not only everything in Caledonia, but then also in different courses that I've taken at the school, learning about indigenous issues and things having to do with land. Um, it just made it so much more something that seems so prevalent. And especially now in this current state of not only the country, um, 
but even the world and just so many issues going on, I just felt like the land and the connection, especially in a year when actual connection to other people seems to have lessened because of, you know, the current circumstances. I just think that it's so important because even through everything, Indigenous people still remain and even though they're fighting constantly, they're fighting because they believe so passionately that they deserve their land and they're entitled to their land, which they completely are and I don't disagree with that at all. I think that they are completely entitled and deserving of it and the least we could do as a country is to give them back a portion of it and stop promising them things that they're not going to see change for decades or just even years. Like they should have this is the change and the change that they need is the change they've been waiting for, that they've been fighting for, that they've been wanting. And it's even, I think, sad to say that they've had to fight for something that they've been entitled to that should have never been taken away from them in the first place. And especially what has been done to them in the process, which we also learned in the course through like assimilation, the residential schools, there are just so many things that have been wrongly done. And I think just continuing to take away or threatening to take away land. I think it's just digging the rest of the country and <clears throat> those in power, just digging them so much farther in deep. And it's just causing so many more issues when really we should be reconciling and not worsening what has been going on. And so I think it's important to also recognize that while everything has gone on, indigenous people through their spirituality and through their culture still remain connected to the natural world. And I think that's why it's so beautiful that we see this color and hopefully one day um, we can see this become fully back into color and we can see this full connection re revamped and put back together fully and for them to seek out and receive the justice that they've been wanting and the change they've been wanting and to get back what they're entitled to. And um, yeah, and I think while doing this project, it also made me think um, in terms of like the Europeans and them coming and taking this land and while everything terrible that has gone on and continues to go on keeps on happening and has happened this project made me really think about it and think on a deeper level um i also thought about how because for myself i am half portuguese and half italian making me Euro from europe and my ethnicity being european and while i think about how you know if Indigenous people hadn't come here and discovered this land and then, you know, European ancestors coming here and, you know, living on this land, I may not be living here. And, but regardless of that, this is so much of a bigger issue. It just had me thinking about that and from that kind of perspective for a minute and just realizing how that could have looked from like a European standpoint, like from the Europeans standpoint and then you know, because so many people have their own opinions and while I am European and that is my ethnicity, I do think that this is so much more of an issue because at the end of the day, we are all Canadian and we all have our own ethnicities, cultures, communities, and that is all to be respected and re respected and res um, respected and um kept together like no one sh should be stripping us of anything taking away anything we shouldn't be taking anything away from other people and so I just think that while I think about my European ancestors and even like my grandparents when they came here to Canada and I just think about that but this is so much of a bigger issue because they were first here and while I may have never been living here without them claiming this land, I also don't think it's right at all that so, so much was taken away from them and so much more harm and abuse and trauma was caused in the process after and continuing. And the fact that this even is something that is still being dealt with and talked to talked about in the year of 2020 is insane and it just shows that there is still a lot more rectifying and reconciling that needs to be done in acknowledgement 
you know, there had been minor acknowledgement, but even less change. And I just think that it is completely unfair and so unwarranted and that the, it needs to stop because we all should be connected to the natural world. And I think we all can learn a lot from indigenous people, their culture, their community. And I think it also is so important to me to take a course like this, not only because I am in the Law and Society program and I do talk a lot about and learn about justice and the law and everything like that. And indigenous law is something that does and has piqued my interest. And I wanted to take this course not only to um, further my knowledge, but I think especially in the current times and where the world seems to be headed, you know, and I think that it's so important to remain as educated as possible. And so I thought in a lot, like a lot of my other courses, they're very applicable to the current times. And I think that it's just important to stay up to date, relevant, learn about the past, to what got us here now, to where we might go in the future. And I think it's just so important to look at this and just think that hopefully one day um, we can all, alongside Indigenous people, have their best interests in mind, give them what they deserve, give them what they are entitled to, and just truly rectify and reconcile with them so we, we all can be part of this country together. And while I know that may seem extremely optimistic and maybe something that seems right now granted our um, governing party and maybe just the way that things seem to be, I think that it's important to remain optimistic. And I think that it's just something that it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort, but I think that we all should be willing to. And as long as we're willing to put in the work, I think a lot of good things can come out of it. And I definitely know that this class was definitely eye-opening for me. I definitely learned a lot. I definitely furthered my knowledge on a lot of on a lot of the things that I did already know. But I think it really opened my eyes to exactly how connected they are to the land and how much of a responsibility they not only give themselves through their laws but just in their community and in their culture and just what it means to them and I think that we all can learn a thing or two from that and that we should all feel this responsibility to give back to the earth and that we should you know as it's our home and it takes care of us we need to take care of it because if we don't take care of it sooner rather than later as we know we won't be able to take care of us anymore and so i think it's important to envision this and i like that i came up with this concept because not only did i think that it was something that i probably never would have thought of if i hadn't taken this class but i also think that it's just an important reminder that you know things um within the indigenous community unfortunately in many ways aren't doing so well right now especially in regards to land and keeping land and fishing right and with water and where they can fish and just what they fish and all that kind of stuff and I think it's important that we want to have this sense of peace and you know learn from the tree of peace and seek out that protection and that peace and to be protected by the eagle and that we just look to the sun and the sky and the land and the animals and we just see that we're all so connected and the natural world's connected to us and we are connected to it and that we we just need to learn and really reconcile and rectify the horrible mistakes that have been made and just give back what is entitled and what is deserved and I know I have said that so many times now but I think it's just such an important point and the land really is the life of indigenous people and it just means so much to them and it should mean something to all of us and I just think that their connection to it and just the way that they use it and are able to use it having it taken away and being converted and used in ways that they wouldn't use it is just completely obliterating what they believe and it's completely wrong and unfair and i just think that it's time that meaningful change takes place and that we can see this all become colorful again and everything can be restored 
So that is my art piece one last time. I will show you again. I apologize for my messier attempt at the eagle, but I really did try to keep the integrity as best as I could and with the tree and the water and the ground and the sunset and the sun, of course. And I look forward to this being watched by our professor and hopefully fellow students. And if you guys stayed till this long, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. It is quite getting quite long now, but I hope you did enjoy and I hope you enjoy my presentation. And I just hope that this all one day can have the same meaning to all of us and especially to the indigenous community. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for listening. And this has been um, my final project for IDLY 308, Indigenous Forms of Justice. Thank you.